How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at some practice problems for chemical equations and patterns of chemical reactivity. All right, so let's begin. One, the coefficients when the following equation is balanced are what? So whenever you do some balancing, take inventory of what elements are there. So this arrow is that kind of fulcrum where you're going to want to have each side balanced. So I have nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen, and I always write it in the same order on the other side of the arrow. The reason for that is now I can just look side to side and compare the two and I don't have to worry about goofing up. So now count how many of each thing. I got one nitrogen, three hydrogens, and two oxygen atoms, right? I'm looking at the subscripts. Now to the other side, I have one nitrogen, I have two hydrogen, and I have oxygens in two different places. So don't get tripped up. I have a total of three oxygen there. So now just pick one of those things to fix and then repeat until it's all fixed. So nitrogens, there's one on each side, that's good, but these hydrogens, they're a problem. I'm counting by threes on this side, but I'm counting by twos on this side. I know I can get both of those to six. So I put a two in front of this NH3, which changes how many nitrogen I have as well as how many hydrogen I have. So now I put a three in front of the H2O here and it changes how many hydrogen I have, but it also changes how many oxygen I have. Now I have three plus the two from over here, so I have a total of five oxygen. Well, I fixed hydrogen, but I messed up nitrogen, so let's fix nitrogen next. I put a two in front of the NO2. Now it also changes my oxygen. Now I have two times two, gives me four plus the three from over there, so now I have a total of seven oxygen. All right, well, how am I going to get to seven if I'm counting by twos on this side? That's tough. I'm going to show you a little trick. So if I wanted seven oxygen atoms, it's the same thing as saying I have seven halves of O2. So now I have seven oxygen atoms. You might be saying, but Mr. Donahue, you can't have a fractional coefficient. And you're absolutely right. So let's fix that. How do I get rid of the fraction? Well, if in the denominator there's a two, I'm going to times everything by 2. So instead of 2 here, I have 4. Instead of 7 halves, I have 7. Instead of 2, I have 4. And instead of 3, I have 6. So now let me double check my inventory. See that I did everything right. And I'm going to make this neater. I have 4 nitrogens. I have 12 hydrogens. I have 14 oxygen. Now let's check the other side. I have 4 nitrogen, so that's good. I have four times two, I have eight oxygen there, but I also have six over there, so I have 14 oxygen, and I have 12 hydrogen. I'm good to go. So the coefficients would be four, seven, four, six. Not too bad, not too bad. Another one, the coefficient for aluminum oxide when the following equation is balanced, blank. All right, so again, same process, take your inventory. I have aluminums, I have oxygen, I have carbon, and I have chlorine. I'm going to write it in the same order on the other side. All right, well, now count how many of each. I got two aluminum, I have three oxygen, one carbon, and two chlorine. On this side, I have one aluminum, I have three chlorine, I have one carbon, and one oxygen. So now just pick one and fix it. So I'm going to start with aluminum. I'm going to put a two in front of here. So now I have two aluminum, but I've also changed my chlorine. Now I have six chlorine. All right, well, let me fix my oxygen next. I'm going to have to put a three in front of this carbon monoxide, this CO. So now I have three carbon, but I also changed how many oxygen. So I got three of those. All right, well, I fixed my oxygen, messed up my carbon some, but hey, I can put a three in front of that carbon. Now I got three there, and oh wait, my chlorine's still messed up. I only have two on this side, but I have six on that side. So let me put a three in front of that one. So the coefficient in front of aluminum oxide would just be a one. So we got one, three, three, two, three as our coefficients. Which of the following chemical reactions are decomposition reactions? Remember decomposition, you're starting with one complex substance and you're breaking it down into multiple substances. So the only one here that's a decomposition would be four. You start with one thing and you break it apart into multiple things. 
One is the opposite. This one is what we call combination or synthesis. We're taking multiple pieces and we're making just one. This is also a combination reaction. Option three is a combustion reaction. And how did I know that? Well, I saw I started with a hydrocarbon, reacted with oxygen, giving me CO2 and water. All right, what are the coefficients when the following equation is balanced? Well, again, take your inventory. C, H, O. On the other side, write the same order. C, H, O. I have eight carbon, 18 hydrogen, and two oxygen. I have one carbon, two hydrogen, and a total of three oxygen. So I got two here, but I also have one here. With these, I like to save oxygen for last because you can do a little trick. So let's fix one thing at a time. I got eight carbons. So I got to put an eight in front of the CO2. So I end up with eight carbons on the right side. I also changed how many oxygen I have. Now I have eight times two. So I have 16 plus the one that's over here. So I have 17 oxygen. Well, let me fix the hydrogen. I have 18 on the left, but I only have two on the right. So I'm going to put a nine in front of that H2O. So I get 18 hydrogen, but I also changed how many oxygen I have. So now I have 16 from the eight carbon dioxides plus the nine from my waters and I have 25. All right, I've run into this problem before. How am I gonna to get to 25 if I have to count by twos, right? That's O2, I can't get individual oxygen atoms. First, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to cheat a little bit and go, all right, if I want 25 oxygen atoms, but I gotta count by two, what I really need is 25 halves of O2. Mr. Donnie, you can't have a fraction in your coefficient. You're absolutely right. So let's times everything by two to get rid of it. Now I have two CH818s. I have 25 O2s. I have 16 CO2s and I have 18 H2Os. So now let me check my inventories, make sure I did it right. Two times eight is I have 16 carbons. Two times 18, I have 36 hydrogens. And 25 times two, I have 50 oxygen atoms. Check the other side. 16 times 1 is I have 16 carbons, so that's good. 16 times 2 gives me 32 oxygens plus the 18 from H2O gives me a total of 50 oxygens, so that's good. And then H2O with an 18 in front gives me 36 hydrogens. So the final coefficients would be 2, 25, 16, I'm sorry. Yeah, 16 and 18. Good to go. Five, which of the following reactions are combination reactions? So again, you want to look for where things are combining, right? You start with multiple things and they combine into one. This first one, we have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen, giving CO2 and water is combustion. And the giveaways are CO2 and water and they're being oxygen and a hydrocarbon in the reactants. The second one looks like it could very well be a combination reaction because we start with two separate things and we end up with one thing. Um, looks like three could also be a combination reaction. I'm starting with two separate substances and I end up with just one substance. And choice four does not look like it because we're starting with one substance and we're breaking it into multiples. So this one is actually decomposition. All right, so which ones are combination, choice two and choice three. All right, moving on six. When a hydrocarbon burns in air, what is produced? Always carbon dioxide and water, always. What is the product of the following reaction? All right, well, I gotta figure out what's missing. They didn't tell me if it's balanced or not. So I gotta figure out what is the charge on aluminum? So I can look on the periodic table and see that aluminum is going to want to lose three electrons to get a noble gas configuration. Iodine, each one of those is going to want to gain one electron to start looking like a noble gas. So what is my equation going to be or my formula for the product? Well, if I'm counting by minus ones and aluminum's plus three, how am I going to neutralize that plus three? I'm going to need three iodides. So it's going to be ALI3. 
What is not true regarding ugh, regarding automotive airbags? All right, so this you got to know a little bit about airbags. All right, and the way an airbag works is there's a, a sodium azide, so there is a compound that has like N three minus in it, and it decomposes to produce nitrogen gas. So nitrogen gas is what's filling up most of the air you're breathing right now. So they have this bag with this solid compound, and when it produces a gas, it takes up a lot more space, and it happens really, really quickly, which is good because if you're getting in an accident, you want that airbag to deploy quickly and to be filled with air, not like rocks, you know? So this is a good good setup. So the gas used for inflating them is oxygen is not true. It's N2. It's a decomposition reaction that produces sodium and nitrogen. That's true. They're loaded with sodium azide. That is true. A gas is produced when the airbag is tr or airbag triggers. True, and they are inflated um, as a because of they are inflated because of a decomposition reaction. True. So which one's not true? Choice D. And that's it. Hope you found it helpful. See you in class. Okay, bye.